Ooh, gosh. Now this is sick. I can't show these notes. Um, so yeah, next time you feel sad about your own art, you know, look look where I started. This is this is what I considered graffiti back then. These are all the sketchbooks that I've collected over the years. Over the past four to five years, I've collected a lot of sketchbooks. I don't remember the exact order of all these sketchbooks, but I do know that. This is the first one that I got from Walmart back in 2019 when I decided that I just wanted to draw again. And this is my first ever sketch, you know, as someone who is gonna take art seriously for the first time. I like watching Twitch and this is one of the emojis that you put up. Then you could see that I was mixing on the paper. You know, there's like a ton of funny stuff in here. I was doing a lot of one point perspective because that's what I learned in my high school. And I think this one was the first one that I was really proud of. And you could see that I dated it there. But it's just copying a logo. It was also very emo back in the day. I was, I thought this one was pretty successful at the time as well. I would collected some ink pens for my time in high school and I was having fun sketching with pencil and then outlining them with this pen. And I was also getting into artists like Bex. So I was very interested in doodling, although I was not, it's not very good at it, as you can see. And this is my first experimentation into realism. I was trying to draw a nose, but I wasn't too happy with that. So why am I going through my old sketchbooks? I think it's incredibly important to go through them because you could see like your progress, right? Sometimes we as artists get into the habit of um, comparing ourselves too much, but in, you know, looking back at your past work, you could see how much you've improved. Like I would never draw a dog like this anymore. Ooh, look at this. It's actually the sketch of a painting that I eventually did. I was very scared of the nose and mouth and it just wasn't looking right. So I decided to just chop it off. <sighs> I do regret these. I really wanted to paint shoes. There's, there was a trend on TikTok at the time where you would, you know, paint shoes. But I didn't really have any ideas of what I want on what I wanted on them. But then my friend told me this quote, and I was like, hey, let me draw that. There you go. Here's a color study. Look at that. Look at me doing color studies back in the day. This I was actually proud of. These are also some shoes that I made because I came up with a concept that I was happy with. I think these are just a lot more successful, and I also sold I think two or three pairs of these. Again, these are all of just a bunch of projects that I've worked on, and it's interesting to see that I used my sketchbook in kind of the same way that I do now where I'm just planning for projects and, and you know thinking them out also it's cool to see this because this was probably one of my most viral videos on TikTok back in the day and this was about the time that I was getting into paintings um I wanted to paint on canvas and this was my first concept of, of a canvas painting and it was scrappy do as a lobster because I thought this was funny and then I eventually painted big chungus on another canvas Ooh, and here's my first experimentation into drawing people for the first time. I was, you can see all those, you know, remnants of older drawings that I just erased because I wasn't happy with. I'm pretty sure there was someone here holding a stop sign that I didn't like, so I erased that. And again, more, more of that, more of that. And I wanted to make a note that you could really start seeing the evolution of my type of art you know i'm interested in the body i'm interested in faces oh gosh here's my first portrait that i've ever drawn i think i was proud of this because i signed it i usually don't sign things unless i'm proud of it and i was doing i remember i was doing like can you guess who this is because i was just trying to capture the likeness just focus on getting the precise details and whatnot so can you guess who this is look at that date 5 2 2020 cool on to the next one so here's another one this one i think is specifically Graffiti? It's a lot of graffiti. Wow. I was very much into, I was getting into graffiti a lot more and you can see still experimenting with, you know, caricatures, people, bodies, um, but very much doing a lot of this graffiti. And I, I quickly realized that I was not good at it. So I, I was, I was a toy, which I still am. I, I don't, I don't think I'm good at graffiti at all. Some of these drawings are also from my girlfriend and I'm very quickly able to tell that that is not my snacks. This is an imposter. So yeah, next time you uh, you you feel sad about your own art, you know, look look where I started. This is this is what I considered graffiti back then. And I'm not going to bore you with every single one, but there are pages and pages and pages. And I was really getting into caricatures. I was really wow. I really like these. I guess it's just the eyes that I like. Um, but this is supposed to be a self-portrait that I drew. No, now that I flip it around, I don't like that. <laughs> Everyone. And I've noticed that a lot of these haven't really been turning into, you know, bigger projects, except I do notice the text. These are some notes that I took for uh, a big project that I eventually did. I think I saw an artist do like a big head and a small body and I wanted to try that. <laughs> oh, gosh. 
<laughs> then this needs to turn into a painting eventually, I think. Wow, look at this. This was one of my original self-portraits as snacks. I was really proud of this, and I think it's still my my profile picture, if I'm not mistaken. 2022, look at that. So I, I, I definitely bounced around a lot because I was not working on this other thing around 2022. But I was also applying to grants. Glens Falls is a, is a place in upstate New York that had a grant opportunity um, that I was applying for. But I didn't get that, and I think I know why now. <laughs> this is me experimenting with uh, simple designs and eventually making a stencil out of this. More graffiti, more graffiti, more graffiti. Wow, you know what? This is an in-person drawing that I did because I decided to go for a walk on the 15th of May, 2022 in, in the city of Worcester um, where I was studying and I just wanted to draw really quickly. I didn't know what I was doing. And then there's Benny Blanco, definitely not me. Here's just a bunch of snacks drawings. I was still, still trying to get that design perfected, but I knew that I needed something more. Um, and I, I, I see one of the biggest differences is the oval eyes that I draw because the, this is just not it. But another benefit to looking back at your own pieces is that you could, you know, take some of these sketches. Like something like this is probably what I'll draw now. Um, I would change a lot of it, but I think this is super cool. And again, a lot more graffiti, you know, getting a little bit more complex. Although I don't know if you can necessarily read that. See, these are both things that I would definitely draw now, just in a better style. It might be cool to take one of these and paint in a future video. Let me know if you would if you would like that. Ah, I remember this. This was in, um, I was drawing this for a printmaking class. And this was uh, sort of the design slash idea of me being sort of, you know, in two different positions. I, I and experimenting with faces, you know, trying to trying to draw faces not in uh not just have a circle just having random shapes and then filling them in for some self-portraits from memory <laughs> God. i think it was at this point i was understanding that you have to you know kind of capture the essence of some features sort of implement them at the right place so i was like seeing the differences between these and here's that that drawing again you can see how that you know the wispiness turns into that and I, oh yes yes i spelled something out and it just yeah yeah, that was the thing. More graffiti, more graffiti. So much terrible graffiti. I don't know how I'm not, oh gosh. I think I'm a little bit better at graffiti now. But still, yeah, this is this is rough. I was also using a lot of glue pen, which I advocate for a lot uh, nowadays. Here's Snacks' foot. If you ever wanted a detailed shot. Here we go. On to the next one. Okay, I don't know what this is. Ah. This is where I practice graffiti. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't have to look through all of this, right? I think this one's slightly older than the past one, by the way. Um, when it comes to graffiti in my work, I have improved a lot. I have changed a lot of things. Some of these I know definitely are copied. Like I, I would never be able to draw that back in the day. Oh, look at this. Here's a script for um, a big project video that I made. You know, I use my sketchbooks for everything, for both sketches and just a bunch of notes. I do know that I drew this during Powa Worcester 2021, which is a mural festival in the city where I studied. Um, and this eventually turned into a digital sketch as well. I was copying the style of Alex Fair, an artist that I met out there. This turned into a painting as well, I remember that. I wanted to include graffiti, but I wasn't happy with the style. Here's some very early, very, very early sketches of snacks, <laughs> oh God. Just for context, if you don't know who Snacks is, this is what he looks like right now. This was very bad. And yeah, just practicing hand styles, you know? Push it up. All right, next one. Uh, more graffiti. This one is cool. This one, I was thinking a lot about gradients, right? And, and color. And I decided that I was just gonna paint something in and just creating sort of a color chart. So one, two, three, four, five, and then applying colors to this later. So, so yeah, all these are just numbers, right? These are the same numbers, but this was gonna be pink and red, and this was gonna be purple and yellow. Um, and this turned into a, a digital painting which I submitted to a show and it got in. So that was pretty cool. And again, there's no sketches of this before. This is just the final product, which I'm, I'm not too happy about. I should be trying out more things. I should be experimenting. Here's where my graffiti started to improve a lot more, you know? I could see the the, the style that, that I'm developing now and even like learning how to give, you know, different attitudes and, and feelings to, to, to the things that I was drawing to the people. Now, this is sick. This is the preliminary sketch for my very first mural. This character, um, this, this is Snacks. He's reaching for the donuts and that's kind of what the concept of it was. I definitely wanted to include graffiti in that because I was practicing so much, um, but these are the letters that I came up with uh, and I wasn't happy with it, so it didn't go in. Such a cool remnant to have, right? This eventually turned into a jacket that I painted um, 
that someone commissioned me to paint. And this was a very quick sketch that eventually, you know, blossomed into something bigger. This became a sticker, you know? So it's very cool to see all these all these things um, starting to leave the sketchbook. This was a preliminary sketch for a bigger painting that I did that's actually right now hanging at Holy Cross, my college. Yeah, I think that's definitely cool that um, I could sort of see the evolution from me just sketching and sketching on my own and then eventually moving on to creating larger paintings because that's what these should be, right? These, This is just my idea book that should be developed and made bigger. But if that doesn't happen, then is, is it really worth it? And I could answer that. I would say, yes, of course it's worth it. Because all this, all this drawing made me happy. And I always had fun just, you know, sketching, coming up with things, even though I wasn't too proud of it, <laughs> like this one. <laughs> but it's still an experience that you've had, right? It's still something that you're learning. It's spending time with it, right? This was supposed to be another painting because um, I was thinking a lot about my Colombian heritage, but it didn't work out. But, you know, thinking about this stuff was uh, important for me as I eventually, or I guess I have now, applied for a grant to go to Colombia. That's pretty cool to see that I was thinking about these things years and years ago. Kind of a shame that I haven't, you know, dated a lot of these things um, because it would be cool to know like exactly what time, what I was doing, maybe to look at my pictures that um, on my phone that I've taken. Also a lot of budgeting stuff, a lot of numbers, a lot of numbers. I should really like incorporate more graffiti. I should really, you know, spend the time to improve and get a lot better. I think um, we will see a sketchbook from when I worked at a graffiti store and that definitely improved my art, my graffiti art a lot. So I'm sure we'll get to that eventually. But this is a, a the sketch of a can that I designed for Redemption Rock Brewery. Um, and I thought of this idea of wrapping his arms around the can and him sort of hugging it, which I think would be funny. Planning an event in Worcester, I developed a project um, and I wanted to invite people to, to go to this place. And right here, I have one of the original posters that I printed out at my school um, from this sketch. So there's the sketch and here's the poster. I was very happy with this. The handmade elements in here, right? Like this and the, the arrow and then the people's names on top. Basic information and then the pieces and then more basic information and then more specific information for whoever wants to read. I think I would definitely improve it nowadays a lot better, but this is pretty cool to see. And yeah, that's the end. So let's move on to the next one. Actually, before we move on to the next one, I, actually, I also have these collection of stickers that I've made. I had a bunch of these, but I don't know where they went. But these are, you know, US postage stickers um, that I've made that I wanted to put up. But these were, again, were just practice because these are, I'll just take out one to show you. I don't need to show you all of them, but yeah, <laughs> not the best. All right, this one feels a little bit more recent. Can I tell you when this is from? I remember I had to do, oh, okay, okay. I remember what this was. This was for a project uh, in a class called Create Lab where we had to pick a thing that we wanted to do for 50 days or 100 days in a row. And I picked doing thumbnail sketches um, to practice composition. And this was such a silly project. I, I... This, however, is cool. Unfortunately, I used graphite. Um, this is why another reason why I like using pen. Um, but this was uh, this is a, a drawing that I did that eventually turned into a mural, which I'll again put on the screen right now. Um, um, but I, you could see a lot of like the notes that I was thinking about when I was painting this. And I knew this was the, the point where I knew that I wanted to move into drawing. I guess I don't do this now, but I, I there was a point, I, I will say this, there was a point in my art career where I wanted to draw like kids in this unique style, essentially, um, doing sort of wacky things and snacks as in this, as in this universe. Um, and this was sort of the beginning because these kids are on a boat in in a ship sort of leading the way to some to some mystical place and so this is interesting uh, i never developed that style although maybe i will eventually um but i i just found like drawing characters is just not not the most fun and i wasn't too good at it um, but you know i'm still developing that I'll, I'll give you a little fun fact if you see the original mural the way we painted it there was a little bit too much space over here so i decided to draw a cat which is the cat that i got around the time i was painting this so that's pretty funny so this is another mural that I, I, I thought up. Um, they didn't really like the I, they didn't like the idea though, but that's okay. It ended up turning to this, which um, this is another mural which I painted, which I will show on the screen. And I was giving myself a lot more space in this era, obviously, because I have these bigger books. I'm able to draw more on one's page, give a little bit more freedom. If you ever get a sketchbook, I recommend the spiral. It's so nice to just flip it all over and just have this book that you're drawing on instead of constantly having to like rip something open whenever you use it. More concept art. Look at that. This is my cat hunter. Ah, you see? So 
uh, one of the original uh, sketchbooks, I drew a, a dog, and here's me studying that dog later. And you can see how much I've improved. Just the way I'm drawing them is a lot, a lot more successful, I think. Ah, I had to do collages for class. You could ignore those. Bunch of more silly stuff. At this point, I was thinking of uh, changing my name to Harsh. That would be my graffiti name instead of Snacks because I wasn't too happy with the letters. Especially the X. The X is probably the most annoying thing, but I still write Snacks. This, okay, this is so interesting. So... I really wanted to paint a mural at a school in Worcester. So I came up with a quick concept um, of painting these animals sort of saying hi, saying I love you in sign language. And then I was gonna have it with some text that said be the change, or maybe do like a sort of ABCD mural, um, cause there was one in, in my neighborhood when I was growing up. And I'll show you the final concept of this, but the, the people didn't really like it. They wanted something more meaningful towards their, um, their school. And that eventually turned into this Quinsigamon Village mural, which I think came out way better than, you know, just a couple animals in, in a cute, funny style. This is sort of my mural sketchbook, it seems, you know, where I was just painting a lot of murals. Okay, so this is July 3rd, 2022. I remember this. We were at a an event called Dr. Sketches, which is essentially a, a live drawing session where we were drawing people. And here are some of those from that. I was, you could see that, that sort of style still coming through even in my realism. Eh. I remember being happy about this one. I thought that one was cool. Eh, it's all right. Aha, this turned into uh, another art piece which was shown at a gallery space. So that's pretty cool to see. These, okay, 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 this is cool. This turned into a larger project, um, which was for a show that was talking about environmental awareness, environmental justice, and I chose to draw a bunch of animals that were endangered at the time. So I, I drew on these cans, which I actually still have here. So I have this one right here, for example, and there you go. Eastern Lowland Gorilla, Save the Animals Christian 2022. Um, and then I also wrote information about them. These are pretty cool, I think. Yeah, look at that. So this was a part of a, another show that I was a part of that I, that I was invited to submit work to. Some sticker concepts, right? This is a sticker that I have. It's cool to see these initial sketches because I just see the final product now, but you know, it's cool to see the, the first iterations of it, right? And this is why it's important to just sketch, to just draw all the time. You never know what'll, you know, turn into nothing or what will turn into like, you know, a, a, a whole sticker that you'll put around everywhere. And here was when I was getting into portraiture a lot more. It was around this time where I painted a large mural um, with this guy, Dave. Um, so you can see me here just sort of fiddling around with just stylistic choices and and whatnot. This is a cool challenge that me and my partner did at a brewery where we each had a pen and we took like five minutes drawing um, at a time. Can you guess which one's mine and which one's theirs? This turned into a sticker. Look at that, that's pretty cool. This turned into a whole painting. That's awesome. I wanted to do something like this where there was a whole background, but I went for a more abstracted one, which is kind of what I do now, which is pretty cool to think about. Here's that other mural that I, that I was showing you, the Dave one. This is uh, me experimenting with color shifts and color changings and this sort of swively line that I drew for a long time. <laughs> oh, God. And yeah, there's there's that sketchbook done. All right, let's move on to this one. I don't know what this one is. No stickers, no name, just nothing. I used to just pick stuff up. Ah. Here's another graffiti book. Um, this is one that I wanted to try a lot of colors with, so you could see <laughs> just how bad these are. I, I guarantee I would still do something like this today. This one was during 2020, so I bought this sketchbook somewhere in New York, I believe, um, and was just trying out everything. That's pretty dope. Um, but I was just trying out everything, everything. Um, and I used to just be terrible. I was so bad. I don't even think it's worth going through all of this um, because it is all, it is all terrible. It is all terrible. But yeah, just, just again, reiterating that my, my art, you know, has. Hello, this is a uh, future Christian. I did not explain it well here, but basically I was saying that, you know, my art was never this well thought out, clean, realistic form that you probably see now on my channel. And it's changed over time. Um, and that's because I practice a lot. I love this one logic quote where he talks about how people love Michael Jordan because of how good he was in his games, but we never see or even think about the amount of free throws that he missed during his practice sessions, the layups, the three-pointers. So consider each failed sketch in all these sketchbooks just another missed free throw that you could learn and move on from. Look at that. <laughs> uh, August 5th, 2020, 30-minute drawing. Um, but yeah, there's logic, I could tell. Black Bear, so I was drawing some of my favorite artists at the time. Machine Gun Kelly, KSI, YouTuber, Kendrick Lamar, Eden, Drake, Drake, 
<laughs> but yeah, you can see me practicing sketchbook using the Loomis method, watching videos, reading books. It's cool to see that I was interested in this type of stuff. Um, and I was very much on YouTube these days, um, uh, trying to figure out how to draw and drawing everything from, you know, my, my, my partner multiple times over again. Um, to just random faces trying to do a slew. Yeah, definitely trying to do a slew on 15th of December. Four, uh, no, three years ago now, which is kind of crazy to think about. It's more faces, so much practice, so much doing it over and over and over and over again. And yeah, I thought I should show you this sticker. So you saw this one already from the other pack, but this is a digital version of, of some artists that I liked back in the day. And I was thinking a lot about color choices, um, values, basically how to draw these faces. I wasn't very experimental back then, but this one's also a, a dud in terms of getting, you know, good sketches. Got a few more to scroll through. So as an art student, you have to uh, use sketchbooks sometimes in class. Um, and this is one that I kind of felt forced to do for class because we just needed to keep up a sketchbook practice and they wouldn't let me use my personal one. Um, so a lot of these drawings are just silly, goofy stuff. If you're ever in New York, I highly recommend visiting the American Na uh, Museum of Natural History. Um, this is when I went in person and started drawing a bunch of the things uh, with a group called Artists of the Met. And if you don't know who they are, they're a group that goes out to draw just in a group to, to talk about art, to talk about um, what they're seeing, to hang out, meet people, connect, network, all that jazz. And uh, I, I went, I think, twice. Um, but I really want to go more. I, I just need to find a, a person to go with because going alone is sometimes a little lonely especially when they break up into groups. This is from when we went to Yale. I decided to draw people in front of the thing. I think this was like a 10 minute sketch. We were forced to do uh, painting studies in this class as well. So um, I had to draw this from life and this eventually turned into a painting, which I will not show you because it is currently wrapped up. And then more studies about composition. Oh, look at this. No, here's a plan for a painting series that I worked on. And I was thinking a lot about um, symbols, using circles, defining spaces, color schemes, whatnot, looking at artists, references and stuff, people to paint and draw. And again, I'll show you the final products from those. So that these three paintings kind of moved from, from this one page. Here's me planning for um, an art show that I wanted to do and that I was applying for. Um, so again, just ideas and ideas and ideas. I'm not one of those people that has the most perfect sketchbook and thinks about what they're gonna draw. I just write, I just draw. Here's some gouache studies because this is a multimedia, mixed media sketchbook and it's a little bit thicker, 90 pounds. I decided to do some gouache studies of my partner and the cat. We had to do a bunch of like assignments, like you write about this artist, yay. And yeah, I actually have some pictures of this big painting that I worked on and, and yeah, painted in this studio. Fun fact, this is not a study. This is um, after I completed the painting, I was like, all right, she wants a color study. Let me just do a color study. So that's what that is. These actually came out pretty cool. I was just trying to fill up pages and I, I used my, my Ohuhu markers um, to draw some hands, people, a little bit of graffiti, eh. And again, more color swatches and whatnot. So many more. Why do I draw so much? This one's definitely a more recent one because I recognize a lot of these drawings. Gosh, I regret using graphite. There's one thing I would do and go back. I would not use graphite, although I still use it now. So maybe, maybe I'm just a liar. You could definitely see the improvement of my graffiti over time. Look at that. Pretty successful, I think. And here's me trying snacks for all the haters who didn't want me to change my name. Ooh, this is interesting. Okay. So I did a project for my school where I, um, I designed and drew a bunch of these sort of floor decals for the dining hall. Um, and this was my plan um, to like talk about what the project was and then put a bunch of these small circles around. Um, and these are kind of the sketches for those, which I will show on the screen. I'm, I'm actually pretty proud of these. These aren't in my portfolio, which they should be, now that I think about it. But I used this arrow and truck like 20 times, by the way, on the same ones. And here's more of those sketches. These are pretty cool to think about, to see. I wonder if they're still there. Probably not. They said it would last like a, not even one semester. I can't show these notes. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll blow this out, but um, these are notes for a final painting. So I, I I was meeting with the friends of a student who passed away in my college. And I, these are just notes from that, you know, big, big mix of things. I was approached by the Worcester Public Library to um, to design some murals for their, for one of their uh, kid spaces in, in one of their branches. And here are some preliminary sketches. I think this one stayed in, this stayed in, this did not. I had some ideas of doing like one, two, three, four, you know, try to find, make a game for basically the kids. 
some local references, right? Like Harvey Ball, Major Taylor, Francis Perkins to local to Worcester, right? More sketches. This was such a big project. I don't have that much footage from from this project um, just because it was so weird to, to film because it was on this long sheet. But I'm very happy with the final project. I have to go back and take pictures of it eventually. Ooh, this is cool. This turned into um, a digital sketch that I did. So there you go, me improving my graffiti tenfold. Look at that difference. We went from black in this weird, not even graffiti way to sniper in this cool, flowy way that I eventually put a character in the middle. So yeah, it's all my haters. This is me trying to get very complicated with it. I don't think this was successful, but no, I'm trying, I'm trying, moving on. Finally, just defining the style um, that I do a lot now when I, when I write that name. Here's my planning for uh, the largest mural that I've ever worked on, that Quinsig mural again. Here's me ordering all the colors because I needed the exact color names and, and whatnot. This was such a pain. Ooh, this was supposed to be a painting, but I never finished it. I like this graphic look better. I, I was doing like realism and it was just like, eh. Look at me, more thumbnails. Me, me tell, not me telling myself the same advice that I was telling myself years ago. I say years ago, but this is probably, no, this is definitely earlier this year. Yeah, still a lot more graffiti, a lot of random stuff. I remember being very proud of this this past summer of me drawing my, my partner G there. I don't like getting to the end of sketchbooks because I get kind of lazy. I think you might've noticed that. You could see me getting into getting into drawing stuff like Kip Toe. I mean, that's a cool composition. Or this one. I think I wanted to turn this into a mural in Colombia. Actually, yeah, this was right before my Colombia trip, I believe. Wow, so this is from 2020. This, is, okay, this book, this book is from when I decided that I was gonna take my first art class at Holy Cross, because partially because I just needed the requirement done, but um, I also wanted to take a class to actually learn a bunch of things. So in real life sketches, here's me being graded. Tolo Tubbins, this is a character that I developed in um, in high school for, was it a web design class? Um, but I eventually made a piece for this class as well, because I was not the most creative person. We had to do daily sketches. This was terrible. This was over break. <laughs> Here are my first figure drawings. I had no idea what I was doing, if you could, if you couldn't tell. I don't know what style this is, but it's not realism. And again, he made me do it over because it just wasn't good. And this is what I came up with. I don't know what these lines are. I'm not trying to find anything. Ah, so I think this is the point where I decided I needed a different book for my caricatures or my, my portraits, right? Because I wanted to move into caricatures. <laughs> But these are not the best. <laughs> Look at this. I actually have a video of me drawing this um, at my old setup. Old, old setup. Because I thought it would be cool to film and record this. And this is when I was really starting to understand how to draw a face or a dog. Actually, these are pretty cool. Here's me playing with like realistic elements, but then drawing, you know, some silly things. You know, to kind of... um. To, to juxtapose that. One thing I didn't realize were my fingers are getting so much graphite on them just from scrolling on these pages. Ooh, here's me developing my signature, which you see on a lot of my pieces now. Practicing letters, practi practicing my throwies, you know, this was a throwie to me back then, 2020. I signed it because I thought it was good. Yeah, just a bunch of faces, self portraits that I, I thought I was proud of back then class projects, stuff for school, and yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, we are at the final sketchbook. Um, I don't remember, uh, again, I, I, I don't know what, what's in these. It's a big boy. Ooh, gosh, okay, I do remember this. I think it's December 26th. So this was, I believe, one day after I started an in my Instagram account, because I was like, you know what? I wanna take this art thing seriously. So I decided to do daily sketches, which I uploaded to TikTok, which we don't have to talk about. They were a little corny, but these are cool to look at. And if any of you, you know, know me from these sketches, from these original, you know, cat drawings, I think that'd be cool to um, to show you kind of the originals now in like a different way, 2024. I don't know what I was doing with, <laughs> I was trying to fill in this graffiti with, with color pencil, this terrible graffiti. I'm happy I stopped because that, that was not, it was not looking good, Christian. There we go, Michael Scott. Watching The Office at this point, I think. Christmas episode. Learning to draw faces, slowly, slowly. Figuring it out, I think. Pop Smoke, trying to experiment with color. Trying as much graffiti as possible. 
I feel like more like a designer than a graffiti artist. Like, what the fuck am I doing there? What the hell? What the hell is that? <laughs> faces, faces, faces. Trying out hand styles. Ooh, I borrowed a skull from someone um, and I decided to draw them over and over again. Not the most successful. Excuse me coming up with a plan that I needed to show to my, my sculpture professor about drawing a raccoon because he wanted me to, or sorry, he wanted me to draw a, a sketch of a raccoon of me thinking about uh, turning it into a sculpture using paper. So that's sort of my idea from that. And I ended up enjoying drawing raccoons, so I drew a couple more in him. You know, I was, I'm very interested in text in general, and I thought that I was gonna move into doing quotes, like in this graffiti bubbly style. Um, but I don't really like it. You can see it's sort of like an emo period. Wow, look at this one. Look at that sketch. Daniel Radcliffe, I believe. It's pretty cool. And yeah, just a bunch of studies. I think these big pages are not the best because I, I kind of have too much space to work with um, as opposed to having too little space in these smaller sketchbooks. I think my favorite size has to be one of these, these 9x12s. I think this has to be my favorite size. I think this is a nice size, maybe a little bit smaller, but I think this is great to like fit into a backpack, carry around. And yeah, just more sketches from like other projects that I work on, like a wire sculpture, a stencil project. Um, for a painting as an anniversary gift. A bunch of cool things, other cool things, other projects. A lot of school projects in these, unfortunately. I think that portrait's pretty cool. But yeah, I think this is one of the last things that I will show. Um, this is a sketch for a digital piece that I eventually made uh, using graffiti. Um, and I went for like a very simple style. You know, you can even see those initial boxes that I drew. But, you know, I hope this video is, is cool, right? I hope um, you seeing the sketches behind a lot of my projects, um, the kind of work that goes into being good at like a certain skill and, and where like my ideas come from and how sort of I organize my, my life, my brain, um, because these sketchbooks are, are things that I bring everywhere and, and, and take a lot of time to, to, to make. So yeah, cool. Thanks for watching.